Algebra Pace 1099, the third one in the Algebra 1 course. And uh, these last few pages are kind of challenging. Division of polynomials. It just sounds, whoo, polynomials and division, wow. Putting them together sounds scary. <clears throat> this one is not as bad as you might think at first, but let's walk through it. All right. When we do division like this, I always think of division with my students like if you had a big number like 357 and we're dividing by let's say 21, you would think how many times would this part go into just the first part, the two digits divided by two digits, right? So you say, okay, that would go in once and then what do you do? Write it underneath, you multiply it, and then you subtract, right, and you bring down the next digit, and then you divide 21 into that, and I'm gonna try seven. And wow, I just did that off the top of my head. That's amazing, so that actually worked. <laughs> so <clears throat> we're gonna follow a similar process here, and let's walk through. Just look at the six x squared, okay? Just look at the two x. Let's divide 6x squared divided by 2x. In other words, what would I multiply times 2x to get 6x squared? Well, 2 times 3 would be 6. And then the x times x would give me x squared. So if I take 3x times 2x, I'll get 6x squared. Now I need to also multiply the 3x times the negative 7, and I get negative 21x. All right. Now, <clears throat> draw a line, and this is where the textbook and your pace may not be real clear, but we are subtracting. It's just like we did here. Okay, we're subtracting. So I always tell students, let's just change it to adding the opposite, because that's what subtraction is. So we're going to immediately change this to a negative, change this to its opposite, which is positive, and now we can add. It's always easier to add than to remember to subtract, okay? So change this. We're doing it because we're subtracting, okay? But it's just easier to think of addition. So change these to their opposites, and now add. When I add these two, da da da, -da they cancel. That's why we did it, okay? Now here, we're subtracting the smaller from the larger. Keep the sign of the larger. So it's going to be negative 16x. Okay? Now, I'm asking myself, what would I have to multiply times 2x to get negative 16x? Well, negative 16 divided by 2 is negative 8. Right? Good. So I'm going to put negative 8 up here. Now notice I'm lining this term up here above the x, okay? In the previous lesson, we did it because we were only dividing by one thing. We just put it right above each term. Here, I bumped it over one so that the x terms are all lining up. The constants are lining up, okay? So now I'm going to take negative 8 times 2x and get negative 16x. Negative 8 times negative 7 is positive 56. Oh, by the way, i got to bring this down. Okay. Now, we change both of these to their opposites and add. That cancels out, and yay, that one cancels out. So we have a remainder of 0. All right. So we now have the answer. Now you can go back and check your work, okay? You can multiply this binomial times that binomial and uh, get your answer. Let's look over here at this one. This one looks a little more complicated. We have x terms, we have some y terms. Notice the x is going down, x to the third, x squared, x, no x. No y, y to the one, y squared, y to the third, okay? And that's often the pattern that we need to see when we have multiple variables. Let's divide just the 8x to the third by 4x, okay, just that much. 8 divided by 4 is 2, right? What is <clears throat> um, x to the third divided by x, <clears throat> x squared, okay? So now I can take the 2x squared times both of these terms, and first of all I get 8x to the third, and 
we should get that because that's the whole reason we did it. Now I'm going to take the 2x squared times the y, okay? Are you starting to see why? Ha ha ha. 2x squared times y is 2x squared y. Now, we'll draw a line, change these to their opposites and add. That cancels out. Oh, lovely. That cancels out too. Yay. <laughs> So now I can jump all the way over to this term, negative 12 xy squared. And I'm gonna take that and divide by 4x, okay? Well, let's see what that would be. Negative 12 divided by four is negative three. x divided by x, it's gone, okay? And so I'll need the y squared. So negative three, okay? And I need the y squared. Now let's, whoop, let's check it by multiplying this times this, negative three times four, negative 12, x, y squared. Good, I got the same thing back again. Now we're gonna take this times the second one. It's kind of like we're doing distributive property, okay? It's like we're doing negative three y squared times four x plus y and we're distributing. So this becomes, <clears throat> by the way, I gotta bring this down, negative three y to the third. Okay, so I just brought that straight down. This becomes negative three y times y squared is y to the third, okay? And now, change these to their opposites, add, boom, it's gone. Yippee! <clears throat> So there's a lot of steps involved in that. It's fairly new, so take your time. I would say just do page 31 in the top of 32 and then stop and go score your work, okay? The bottom of 32 is different. We're gonna do a separate video just to explain the bottom of page 32 and then we get on to the last lesson, page 34. We definitely need some help with that as well. All right, so we'll see you again in a few minutes or hours or days. <laughs>